Yeah, you know, uh, we were having a bit of a laugh and uh, time got away on us. I forgot to keep an eye on the machine. And suddenly I've got voices yelling at me all over the place going, hit the buttons, do your job, get get going. So uh, I, I do apologise about that. Uh, but Ryan Neville, coming out of uh, Christchurch, and, and which part of Christchurch are you in, my friend? Uh, well, we're, um, due to, I'm sure everyone knows, due to the earthquakes that there were a few years ago now, we've uh, originally was over by QE2 Park, which was over, over by the sea. Uh, uh, and of course, now we're on the opposite side of town, so I'm kind of... Pools for Hornley Way at the moment. Right. So I'm just looking at our window at, at the Port Hills. Yeah, I... Well, you know, it's been a long time since I've actually had somebody talk to me uh, about the Port Hills. Uh, I absolutely miss Christchurch and, and how people talk about Christchurch, if you know what I mean. Uh, I personally, uh, I was brought up in Kashmir Hills uh, for a little while and, uh, of course, did some time at Wickram Air Base uh, many, many moons ago. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, things have moved on. And how is Christchurch, uh, how's it recovering now? Oh, look, look, it's looking really good. I mean, you know, from a band and a music point of view, we're getting a lot more, um, you know, uh, 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 play and things like that, which is really nice. New bars and cafes opening up all of the time. And, yeah, look, it's good. I mean, it's sad, of course. It's sad to see what's happened and things like that. But, um, you know, it's also time, time for a change, and it's, it's looking fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I, I fully agree with you. It is time to get a whole new uh, way of thinking about Christchurch. Uh, I really struggled, I've got to be honest with you, uh, when they told us that they were going to make a cardboard church. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, that kind of, I think all of us are a little bit uh, unsure of how, how that would go. I have been to see it a few times. Now, the cardboard and the raining thing, we're thinking, how is that going to work? But look, I must say, it does, it does look good, it looks impressive, and it's still standing. So that's, that has to be a good thing, doesn't it? Absolutely. And, and believe me, uh, those thoughts went through my mind as well. You know, uh, first good rain, it's just going to, all God's going to come down. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, but uh, it's got to be rather unusual to be able to hold a bell town. Now, does it have one? Um, look, I, no, it, it hasn't. To, to, to my knowledge, I must say, it, I don't think it does. No, because you're right, that would weigh just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you know. Apparently, I know it says that it's made of cardboard, but I, I got the slight hint that's a wee bit of concrete in there as well. Yeah, they may have packed it with something. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah it's just the exterior that's cardboard. Don't worry about it. It won't get soggy. Uh, now, Ryan, you were born in Christchurch, and uh, uh, you, you've travelled extensively around the world, but at the same time, Christchurch seems to call you back. Yes, look, it does, it does. I mean, there's been many times uh, that, you know, there's always been the option of wanting to move and things like that. But no, look, we, we've always loved uh, being here in Christchurch. You know, it, it's home, it's home. So it's family and friends, fantastic fan base. You know, so, so that's that's the reason why we stay, because we just love it here in Christchurch. Yeah, yeah uh, believe me, uh, I fully understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm a South Islander myself, although I was brought up in the South Island. Um, uh, I was actually born in the United States, but I, I'm an immigrant uh, from the age of two. Uh, I've even got a New Zealand driver's license, so I think I qualify as a Kiwi uh, more than anything. Uh, and of course, I was brought up in the west coast of South Island down the coal mines and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we're not here to talk about me. I, I want to know about The Devil's Gonna Pay. Yeah, this was the song that we just played uh, just moments ago. Tell me about that. Uh, where did you get a, a, the lyrics for that? Sure. Well, it's, it's this strange thing. I've had this kind of, uh, ever since I was a child, I've always kind of admired the whole blues and folklore. So I've always been very interested in this, uh, you know, devil went down to the old, the old famous, um, we'll call it, that uh, Robert Johnson went down to the crossroads. Now, I was very fortunate last year and did um, a trip down, down to the crossroads, uh, just out of Memphis there, down in Clarksdale. And, of course, you know, I went down to the crossroads and kind of just kind of stood there and looked around. I mean, things have changed since, uh, since way back then. And, um, and I just kind of thought this, this, this whole story about the, you know, the devil um, took a soul. And I thought, well, then what would happen if we turned that around and that Robert Johnson, uh, you know, I get Robert Johnson. So I just kind of thought, what an interesting spin on it. So the kind of song wrote itself based around that whole you know, so if the devil's going to take things from people, 
what happens if we chase him? <laughs> yeah. Really yeah, I could just imagine the bailiff chasing after the devil saying, you are it. <laughs> no, it's, it's quite an unusual spin on it, so it leaves it up to the imagination, doesn't it? Absolutely, it does, and I love the track, I really, really do. At, at the same time, I, I did note that you have been down to the crossroads, so I just going to ask, is the tree still there? Uh, no. Uh, well, actually, it, it's saying that yes, but it's covered these days with like everything in America, which is which is which is lovely. It's covered with signage and things like that. But yeah, there is a tree there. And funny story, there's shops all around it. You just, if there wasn't signposted, could you have a clue? Yeah, I, I get it. I do. Uh, at the same time, I note that you've done the uh, Route 66 tour. Yes, that's phenomenal, fantastic trip. It's a 16 day trip, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, haven't been on it myself, but I know a couple of people that have actually done that as well. So uh, uh, very, very cool. In fact, at the moment, I've got a couple of uh, people that are doing tours all around America. And I've got them all, all like in the world at the moment. Uh, some of them we're bringing here to New Zealand. Uh, now, at the same time, my friend, uh, we were having a little chat uh, about uh, your Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, if you're on any of those, uh, do people uh, get hold of you? Can people get hold of you that way? And do you respond? Yes, look, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like I've just started to, well, I've been on Facebook for quite some time now, but I'm just literally getting my head around Instagram, which I know it's been around for a wee while, but, you know, it's like you, you get busy. I've been meaning to do it, but yes, on Facebook, you know, Ryan Neville and the Midnight Blues Band. And look, I pretty much live on that website. Maybe it's been a wee bit too much time on there. Um, but uh, yes, so easy to contact us and we answer back all our questions that we get often. And we have a, a really good sized band base now that we're very proud of and things like that. So absolutely. So feel free to see if there's any questions or have a chat to us at some stage. We, we would love to hear from you. Nice, nice. And I've got to admit, Ryan, it is an absolute pleasure being able to talk to a Kiwi for a change. Uh, normally I'm in the other side of the world, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I'm absolutely loving the accent. And uh, it wasn't until I actually started talking to copious amounts of Americans and Canadians uh, that when I finally did get back to a Kiwi, I noticed the accent. You know, once upon a time, you really don't notice it. You don't. No. Absolutely, absolutely, and I do talk to a few, oh, here's one for you, I've got to be honest with you, uh, a few weeks ago I was talking to a, a good old boy who plays uh, uh, country western out in the outbacks of Australia, now he has, uh, and quote, unquote, I have kangaroos bouncing through my backyard every day, right, didn't know that a kangaroo can't bounce backwards. Yeah, yeah, next thing you know, koalas will be falling out of the trees. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, yet, that, that's a yet again, I was giving him a bit of stick. I told him, you know, beer is spelt with B -E -E not four X's. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that looks, yeah, that has been a classic for many years. That's the old, the old joke, isn't it? And it's really, really X. is, you know. And how do you pass a four X? Uh, underarm. That's, that's true. Look, I had to, we, we're performing over there at the end of the year, so I had a friend of mine who, who was actually, who's a friend here, that he lives here now, I should say, and, and he was uh, born in Sydney. And I said, you know, you need to, I need to learn about these things, you know, what, what does the poor ex stand for, and then we learn how, how to speak Australian and all these sorts of things. So we always have this nice kind of laugh, you know, between us and and the Aussies, don't we? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, uh, what do you call an Australian with a bunch of sheep in K Road on a Friday night? <laughs> don't know. What, what do you call Australian? A, a pimp. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's mean, isn't it? That, that's good, but it's mean. Well, you know, yeah, we can fleece them as much as anybody else, really, can't we? <laughs> Very true. 
<laughs> anyway, my friend, uh, now I will really, really want to talk to you about this because uh, this is a song uh, we've been playing a little while now, and I'm just going to get my glasses on to make sure I've got the right song in mind. And uh, the song is called I'm Coming Home. And now, tell me all about that. How did you come to the lyrics of that? And I presume that you recorded it in the studio where you are right now. Yes, uh, yeah, and that, that, is, that is true, actually. All of these songs that we've recorded at this point, uh, we, we have recorded here. This is, my, uh, this, this, is where, this is where I live. Um, and, of course, this is where I record. So everything gets recorded in my home studio. And, um, yeah, so I'm coming home. It was, again, one of those songs. Loving the whole idea with the blues. You know, when you sort of write to music, you have to kind of think... Um, <laughs> You know, uh, without further ado, I presume we should have the plan. Uh, I'm being pointed in the air again. So uh, here's Ryan Neville and coming home right here at Galaxy 107 FM. <laughs> going to talk to you about uh, uh, doing, doing the crossroads thing, but you preempted me on that. Uh, now you, 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 co right. you collect guitars. Yes, I've got this. I'm, I'm hooked on it. Every time I see one, I might have to buy it. Okay, okay. Because I'll get there, it. There is a cool... Sorry, I was just about to say, there is a cool story about... Um, so there's a nice little club that Morgan Freeman is... Um, part owner of that's right down down there down and uh yeah it's uh I'm trying to think what it's called again it is ground zero is is what it's called so that's right down down there highway 49 so that, that's a it's a nice little story so if, if you want to come back to that I, I will do actually in fact i've got a friend of mine that sings about ground zero oh fantastic yeah he's a, um, see that? That's a he's, he's a former bass player for a band called bad company Mm. No way, really? Yeah, yeah, Gary Harvey. Uh, great old statesman, great old gentleman of the game, and um, also he uh, was an extra from time to time for a band called Super Trap. No way. Yeah, bro. That's a, a, a fantastic band. And uh, yeah, he's living in Devonport. Wow. That's, that, that's great news. See, that's a band that I would, I would love to see live. Yep, absolutely. In fact, uh, you may meet him when we come down your way at some stage. I'm sure we'll uh, bounce off each other sooner or later, believe me, bro. Um, yeah. At the same time, I have a guy who uh, makes Ellington guitars. Really? Yeah, bro. And he makes I... some superb machines. He really, really does. Okay. I would love to get one. I love un unusual things like that. Nice. Well, I tell you what, I'll put you in touch with my mate. His name is um, <laughs> Moon Dog Blues. His name is Moon Dog. Moon Dog. Moon Dog. Moon Dog. Yes. Ah. Yeah. He, he, We've um, heard that name before. Uh, probably everywhere. He he's a, a real classic um, blues man himself. He's uh, comes from Wangarei. But been over in Aussie oh. many, many times, been up and down the country. Uh, also, he's a member of the family. <laughs> Is he really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, the name definitely rings a bell. I must have been, banged into him or jammed with him at some state or something. That name definitely rings a bell. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll uh, pass on details uh, to him to get in touch with you because he uh, makes some superb guitars. He really, really does. Thank you. That'd be great. Just got to make sure. 
So, uh, yeah, we'll have a chat about that because uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, everybody wants to know about your guitars because uh, people like to know little intimate things about artists, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple sitting right by me here that I, that, that I can show you. Nice, so we'll just go... <laughs> oh my goodness, you, you know something? Um, let, let's go back here. Uh, this is tragic. <laughs> um, uh, you see, I don't have a production manager at the moment. She's actually gone out for a little while, so uh, uh, I'm not getting the prompts that I'm supposed to be getting. And uh, I do apologise about this, Ryan. Uh, but at the meantime, uh, we're quite comfortably sitting here having a chat off air while uh, your good music's playing. And uh, uh, I found out, Ryan, that uh, you tend to like to collect guitars. Tell me about that. Right. Well, it's something that started a long time ago. I, I still recall that first uh, electric guitar I bought and paid about fifty dollars for it. And since then, I just one of those things. You know, like they say, some some people collect cars, some people collect golf clubs, and I tend to have this thing uh, collecting musical instruments, and they tend to be uh, with strings on. So I do have uh, quite a, a collection. Uh, I've got them stuffed all around the place at the moment because it's a little bit hard trying, trying to fit them in. Uh, and uh, yeah, my, my, my wife keeps four of them stuffed in places because I just have to keep finding spots for them. <laughs> so yes, I have been collecting them over the years, that's for sure. Well, you know, my friend, I'm going to introduce you uh, to a friend of mine. In fact, uh, like a brother-in-law, he uh, sort of grew up with my wife's brother's uh, back in the day, let's put it that way, and uh, he's become somewhat of a New Zealand icon in the blues game himself. His name's Moondog, and Moondog Blues is his band. Uh, absolutely brilliant guy, but he makes Ellington guitars, and, and uh, some of the best guitars I've ever, ever played. I've got to be honest with you, uh, I've had a couple myself, uh, but I've moved them on uh, as prizes and stuff like that, because uh, I, I just started to fall in love with these guitars too much. Uh, I thought, you know, get rid of the temptation while you can, otherwise it's never going to go. You know what yes. I mean? Yes, absolutely. So, yes. so now tell me, um, well, what are some of your favourite guitars? Right, well look, that's, that's always tough, isn't it? It's always hard because every guitar has its purpose, which I try to explain to people. People always say to me, Ryan, why do you have so many? Look, surely you can get by with one, it's like, no. They will have different sounds, different purposes, and different meanings. So I'm going to pick up a couple and show you a couple that I've got sitting next to me. These are the ones I have out on show. So uh, where do I start? Okay, I might start with one of my craziest looking ones. And I bought this a long time ago. I had this made, actually. So let me just pick this one up and show you. So this is uh, it's a copy of the George Lynch. So it's a beautiful looking skull guitar, as you can see, and I'll turn it this way around. So, yeah, I am, you know, the odd gig it comes out for, I do get people asking me when I do some shows, you know, to please bring this along with me. Um, and look, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it plays really well. I've had a couple of little things tweaked as you do to make it more. Uh, so that's, that's probably one of, of my favourites. But again, I, she, she doesn't get played often. But let me show you one of my other ones too that I bring out every now and again. Right, now this would, you know, this is the old twin neck. Being sort of, I loved, you know, the Richie Zambora from Bon Jovi days. Always loved um, his playing. So this is uh, his mop. And just in case people are, are wondering, I, I do get asked, you know, how do you play Well, if you don't, and you can't. Uh, although the odd show, I've had someone reach around my shoulder and play the top one, play, play the bottom one, just, just for a bit of fun. So that's kind of two, two of my favourites. And then the ones that I've got sort of tucked away tend to be the original Fender Stratocasters and Telecasters. I've got a whole collection of those and things like that. And my collection just keeps on growing, which is um, good and uh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> I try, but I feel a bit guilty that the old one gets, uh, get, gets left. You know, uh, I fully understand. Now, uh, I've got to be honest with you, uh, Ryan. Uh, one of the best double neck guitarists I have ever, ever met. Uh, and we brought him into New Zealand, he played at the power station, was Steve Vai. And uh, he had a double neck there that he just performed with, swung the thing every which way, and, and was able to just be an absolute master uh, of, of that particular instrument, and was totally in awe uh, of what he could do with that machine. So uh, it is not easy to play, 
And I absolutely applaud anybody that gives it a go. Well done. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, I very much, uh, I didn't catch Steve by when, when he was here, but I would have loved to have seen this, this show, this for sure. Yeah, believe me. Um, we, we put another one of our bands, uh, back in the day, they were uh, Big Stick, uh, back then. Uh, they were the curtain raiser for Steve By, and it was an absolute packed house, if you can imagine, at the uh, power station. That was before the days of Crystal Palace and then back to the power station again. Yes, yes. Now, uh, is it true that the power station did their last show not so long ago? No, no. Uh, they, they're pretty much booked out for the next number of years, to be quite honest. King's Arms was the one that closed down. Arms. Yeah, that, that's, that's what it was. It's sad to see it go. Absolutely, it's an iconic building, uh, but apparently they're going to put um, high-rise apartments on the uh, on the site, which uh, it just doesn't justify it for me, to be quite honest. Uh, you cannot build anything other than good music on music. You're absolutely right, and those amazing performers that had had the fortune of playing there, you know, that's uh, a sad set goes for sure. It absolutely is, and uh, we tried to get up there for the night, but unfortunately, the uh, place was completely packed, as, as you would expect, so uh, yes. no point, really, to, to go up, you know, but there's been many, many a good evening had by, well, a lot of Aucklanders and a lot of people around the country and around the world at the King's Arms, so uh, yes, you're quite right, it is sad to see it go. Now... I, I want to talk to you about Fire in the Tracks. Now, this is a, a bit of a fave. It's starting to grow on me. Now, tell me all about this. Ah, okay, so Fire on the Tracks. So that's uh, basically the um, song of, of the new... Um, yeah, so that song basically was the first song that you wrote for the new um, collection of songs that I've just released, so the new CD out. And uh, again, I've always had this thing, you know, like we always say when um, when we write or things that make us feel feel good. I've always had this thing about, you know, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just like the colouring and the brightness of it and things like that. So I kind of like this idea of this again, a childhood kind of um, picture of lots of things, feelings, emotions, and and those sorts sorts of things. So. Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of a mixture of, of feelings is where that song came from. Now, before we get into playing the song, I've got to ask you about the guitaring in it. How long have you actually been playing the guitar? I can't fault you on this. Uh, that's, that's always a tough uh, uh, it, 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 As we said earlier, about time flashes by, so I think I would have been playing the counter up roughly, so about 30, 30 years, I think. And so it, it's around that. Mm. And it's something I've always enjoyed. It's something I've uh, I've played other instruments, but the guitar is just something that I really enjoy and admire other players and things like that. That's, mm. It's uh, one of my favourite tracks to actually play on. Some some songs lead up to a nice lead solo and things like that. So it's one I really spend time on and really enjoy. Nice. Uh, now, I was talking to you uh, prior to going to the interview about a young lady that we have uh, coming out of Australia. Well, she's done it again. She really, really has. Uh, she comes out of Cairns, Australia. And she asked me one question. I'm sure she just waits for these interviews to be able to get in touch with me. Either she likes uh, repeating herself to me or she really wants me to ask this. But, uh, uh, Ryan, I have an idea what the answer is. But, Ryan, what is your marital status? Yes, well, I've got a wee bit of a story to that, and before I start that, is, is yes, my fantastic and uh, lovely wife, Jenny, that uh, her and I renewed our vows last year in Las Vegas. Uh, so the good old typical Elvis Chapel in Las Vegas, so we've been married for uh, you know, about 10, 10 years. Yeah. Vegas, where I was performing over there, so we could bring you that house. So, yes, married. Yeah, you know, um, and good on you for doing so, too. I, I think I'd take those occasions and, and uh, absolutely ace them like you did uh, if, if the opportunity came up. Uh, at the same time, uh, you've not only been to Vegas, you've been to Memphis, New Orleans, Texas, New York, Nashville. Now, um, I've got to ask you, have, have you ever gone to the Grand Old Opry just to uh, have a look around? I had a really, uh, a really fortunate um, event, which played it. it was really fortunate. So there was a uh, songwriting uh, 
this is what there, and I was asked over too. So I wrote a couple of songs and uh, got asked to, to perform over there, uh, which was just fantastic. You know, the feel of the place, the people there, uh, meet some incredible people. But, you know, what an amazing historic building to, to kind of see and be and be a part of. And, you know, and the people who have played there and things like that. It's, yeah, absolutely one, one of my favourite things that, 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 that I've done. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, uh, i got to admit, I've been there myself and uh, uh, took in the ambiance of, of the place, if you want to say it like that. Uh, also, uh, not forgetting that uh, uh, originally, and still today, it's a radio show as well as a uh, more country-flavoured theme. Uh, but my favourite place, and I don't know whether you uh, would have had a chance to be able to have a look at it, is that uh, little space behind the curtain, uh, behind the stage, if you know what I mean. There's a little walkway there. Uh, and it goes back to a little changing room, stuff like that. Uh, and just standing there, you can just picture uh, some of the legends that's walked down that little gantry, if you know what I mean. Uh, and yes. I, I had people that literally had to pull me away. I didn't want to leave. That was home. I was there. I loved the place. Yes, you can just in your mind to see that, you know, back in the day when it was uh, huge and things like that, and all those famous artists would have been amazing to have been a part yeah. Yeah, absolutely, everybody from you know Dolly Parton, Tammy Wynette, uh, of, of course, uh, uh, let's go uh, more Garth Brooks and stuff like that, you know what I mean? These guys, uh, uh, history makers, right there in that building. Yes, and it's, we're also very fortunate because we're true, but you know, at that stage, they, the Americans didn't quite know where we actually were, you know, trying to explain to them that we're not actually doing a born to Australia, was we were tough, but we, we were on air, we did a TV and radio show while we were there as well, because they were just so intrigued that we'd come all this way and they were talking about all the greats that had played there and things like that, so we had a wonderful time. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I, I get that about uh, New Zealand and Australia, I go through that a lot, uh, and I, uh, I even take, uh, and i got to rejoice about this, uh, just recently they found out that New Zealand has a continental belt that's connected all the way just past Australia, would you believe that Tasmania actually now officially belongs to New Zealand as part of our continental belt. So I'm starting to put letters together uh, to the uh, Prime Minister over there. Uh, you can keep your little detention island. Uh, we want back pay forever uh, on Tasmania. We want to be reimbursed every cent that's been collected in taxes from year dot. Great point. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I really, really do. So, uh, i, I got to get going. Moving on now. Uh, and people are saying to me in my ear, Grant, get going. Play Fire on the Track. So here's Ryan Neville right here at Galaxy 107 FM and Fire on the Tracks. I love you, Mama. I like this song. Yeah, I do too. I love this song. It's, um... I'm getting caught up here. Oh no. Yeah. Ugh. Actually, I've placed, uh, you know, it's, isn't, it, isn't it funny, you know, some songs that, that I may not have liked, other people do. So, I guess that I love that playing the songs out there. It's, you know, the ones that I sort of maybe cringe at weren't necessarily the ones that I kind of um, would work with my favourites. It's quite interesting to hear other people. So, it's, you know. You yeah. know, uh, it, it's a learning game for me too. Um, nine times out of ten I can pick a hit and I can pick where it's going to go and where it's going to end up, stuff like that. Uh, and, yes. and then people just surprise me and go, no, that's not it. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Or bang, that's one that I didn't actually consider and, and it's yeah. gone through the roof. Absolutely. Believe me, it happens to me all the time. Um, at the same time, Ron, um, we... we Feel that your music is absolutely stunning. Have you ever met a guy called um, Cara Gordon? No. Okay, he no. Come, he, he's a blues guy himself. He comes from Auckland. Um, in, in fact, uh, many, many years ago, I used to have a, an entertainment company where we were bringing, com uh, bringing bands and everything into the country. And his brother used to work for me as a roadie back in the day. Um, we had Cara literally sleeping on my couch. And he, he was useless as a roadie because he would never put the guitar down. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. If we wanted, uh, you know, a minstrel, no worries, he was there at a moment's notice. But, you know, go and climb some scaffolding, 
Uh, dude swings his guitar over the back and then he struggles up. The, nah, it's not going to happen, bro. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Classic. Yeah, but oh, it's, it's funny. It's quite true. I'll have to introduce you to him too. Um, stun, yeah. Stunning, stunning artist, to be quite honest with you. Um, he, he's worked well, with. Must, it, yeah, must play some stuff. Yeah, but. So, yeah, so if, um, is it. Is it something, have you, have you played yourself in bands and things? What, what sort of bands have you played? Uh, me, personally, um, I, I play, I'm a legend in my bedroom. <laughs> that, that's the God's honest. Um, I have played with bands over the years, but I'm not proud to say anything there, to be quite honest, because um, it, it's like me singing. I sing tenor, or 12 miles away from anybody that's listening. <laughs> right. That's why I appreciate what you do, <laughs> sir. You, you have got it down, literally. Uh, me, me, I'm just a radio announcer, and I'm an engineer. Yeah, oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, I've spent many, many years. I love, I love the engineering side of things too. It's fantastic fun, isn't it? I, I used to work for the Stepping Brothers back in the day. Wow, and that's awesome. Also Harlequin Studios. I've toured as a um, live concert engineer as well. I've been around the world a couple of times with some big bands. Brilliant, that's fantastic. And used to work... Yeah, that, that's awesome, but... Hard to find good old engineers, isn't it? It yeah, really, no, really is. Yeah. It really is. I used to work for uh, Bass Corporation and Frontier Touring. Oh, really? Yeah. So That's uh, very cool. Tra traveled a bit. Nice. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the best way to do it with, with a band. It's a great way to see the world. Absolutely. Well, um, I was on tour with a particular band when the lead singer happened to... Uh, Choke himself to death. No names Who given. Was that? Yeah, no names given. Gotcha. Wow, no way. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to the desk before I get told off again. <laughs> it seems to be a habit today. <laughs> 